Well, all right. And also, I'm sorry, but the end there being like, pride should be about empowering ourselves to stand up for ourselves against any persecution that we may face. Like, yes, that is true. You are correct. But saying it shouldn't be about changing the minds of like bigots and homophobes is completely false. That is completely incorrect. The first pride was a protest. Pride exists for, yes, us to be empowered and to feel safe and comfortable and like we can stand up for ourselves and have a community. But also it is about being loud. It is about being there and telling people, especially bigots, that we are here and we are not going anywhere. It is about trying to change people's mind. It has always been about that. It is fighting for equality. And you think we're going to change bigots' minds towards our side through the extremes of pride events. And like, sure, it's less of a protest than it used to be in a sense, but it is still showing people what we are. So what people see at pride events is what we really are? How strong we are and like the fact that we aren't going anywhere and that we deserve to be seen and heard. People who have something reasonable and decent to say are the ones who need to be heard. We don't need to be heard just because we're gay. And we are going to be seen and heard whether you like it or not. See right there, you don't care how we're perceived and yet at the same time, you think that our rights revolve around trying to dictate how other people think of us. You can't have it both ways. It has always, always been about changing the mind of people who don't agree with us. That's literally the point. And you think the stuff that goes on at these parades and the more extreme they get and in front of children is going to bring people to our side. That's literally how it started, why it started, and why it's so important. Maybe we should go back to that instead of trying to celebrate the most extreme and then get mad when people don't like it. So, this is four things people tell me as a gay Republican. You're a traitor to your people. My people does not equal my sexuality. Republicans hate you. And then like an article saying, majority of Republicans support same-sex marriage. Did they pick you yet? Yes, lol, they're very kind to me. You must hate yourself. Nope, I love myself, which is why I stand up for my values. Okay, Evan. No, your people aren't your sexuality. Sure, your friendship circle and your politics and whatever can be about more than your sexuality. However, because of your sexuality, you should be able to empathize with other people who are also queer. You know what I mean? Like that's kind of the point. It's kind of the point of like, you're betraying your people because going against, <laughs> going against queer rights. What are queer rights and how are they being taken away? Is like, yes, a betrayal to yourself, but also more of a betrayal to other queer people. Who in your examples here are arguing against gay rights? Who do not share the privilege of being a cis white man. You know, like as a part of the like queer food chain, you as a cis gay white man do kind of sit at the top, you know? I guess it's really important to bring up the oppression Olympics. And so like, you're kind of throwing everyone else under the bus. How? So like, yes, your people does include queer people. Like, it's not everything. You don't have to be like all connected and only associate yourself with queer people, but you should be able to empathize with other queer people. Not if those people want to dismantle the systems that make up society. And why they might be upset with your political standing. If they're upset that I don't want to dismantle the systems that make up society, I don't really care. You know, like it's really not that hard to figure out. And like Republicans supporting gay marriage, again, that's not the entirety of queer people for one. That doesn't include like trans people. <laughs> it doesn't include a lot of queer people. And also, not everyone, again, like most Republicans support gay marriage, okay? Yes, okay. But like practically all liberals and leftists do, as far as I'm aware, you can't really consider yourself at least a leftist without supporting queer marriage. If the majority of Republicans support it, then why does it matter whether liberals support it even more than they do? Republicans love you because, as I said, you are at the top of the queer food chain. You are, you are 
very easily able to be like the token gay because you are a cis white man and you are able to politically align yourself with them. So they can be like, see, I don't hate gay people because I like this guy. I like this guy. So like, I'm allowed to be homophobic to everyone else. Cause like, I clearly don't actually hate gay people. <laughs> they would turn around and stab you in the back so fast. And like, sure. There are some who would stab people in the back, but to make this blanket statement that anyone on the right is gonna stab you in the back, I'm sorry, that's shit. Not all Republicans. People who are more like center right might be more willing to like accept you, but um, like a lot of them are not. And they would shove you under the bus so fast, just like you shove the rest of us under the bus. It, it, it's, an, it's a thing that could happen. The gay people who don't want to radically change society and don't want to dismantle cis heteronormativity and a bunch of other systems aren't going to be thrown under the bus. And it would happen, given the chance. Happy Pride Month! Friendly reminder, being gay is not a personality. Hey, you know what else isn't a personality? Being a gay Republican. And yet, here we are. <laughs> Being gay isn't a personality in the same way that being straight isn't a personality. Who knows, maybe they're talking about stereotypical queenie theatrical gay people, I don't know. But like, do you sit here and tell straight people that when they sit around and talk about like their like romantic interests and their sex lives? Probably not. You're probably not sitting there and being like, guys, being straight isn't a personality. Well, of course not. Merely talking about any subject does not make a personality. You kind of just accept that as like, normal conversation. Um, so I don't know why you, as a gay man, think that when people are doing the exact same thing, but about being queer, that it's suddenly a problem. If you're truly talking about the same types of things as straight people are talking about, but you're but it happens to be someone of the same sex instead of the opposite sex, then no, there shouldn't be a problem. But if if you're constantly using the word queer and you're constantly putting it in, in the, the conversation, you know, queer this, queer that, oh, my queerness, my queer joy, or whatever. Yeah, it's it's going to be met with some pushback, or at least a negative attitude. Being straight is not a personality. Being gay is not a personality. Sure. But, like, I'm allowed to express my queerness. What does that even mean, express your queerness? Is this one of those things, like I said just a moment ago, you know, queer joy? It, what does queer joy mean? You know, it just sort of reminds me of this of religious people uh they feel joy once they feel the 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 the, the warm embrace of jesus right oh I, the queer joy it, what what does that even mean now, now you didn't say queer joy but you're talking about expressing your queerness and i have no idea what that even means straight people don't go around talking about how they're straight they don't use the word straight to describe anything they, they just talk about the things they do and if you're doing the same thing and, and you're just talking about the things you do, great. And surround myself by queer people because we understand each other in a different way. And I just, am, I just am queer. It just seems that there are a lot of people trying to add more value to the word queer than it really should have. It really should just mean someone who is under the LGBTQIAA plus umbrella. But no, it, it's it's got this even deeper meaning like like it's well like i said earlier like it like, almost like it's a religious sort of thing and you're supposed to believe a very specific set of things and never question any of it you know i'm gonna talk about being queer because that's like part of who i am as a person just like straight people are gonna talk about being straight because they're straight you know like it kind of we we all kind of talk about that shit regardless People talk about the things that they do. They don't talk about their straightness. You know, I don't talk about my queerness, my gayness. Um, most black people don't talk about their blackness. You know, we just talk about the things we do. And if that's what you're referring to, hey, I, I, I'm totally for it. But if you're pushing all the buzzwords constantly, yeah, it's going to irritate people. I always feel like misogyny too. So many people are like, well... The gays have marriage now, so we're all equal. Well, women have the vote now, so we're all equal. That's not how this works. Even if 
we had completely equal legal rights, that doesn't take away from social oppression. That doesn't take away from social discrimination. Like discrimination and oppression still exist whether or not the laws align, and they don't. Legal rights are all we can ask for. We don't have the right to control or dictate how other people think of us. Equivalent. And a lot of those laws are due to Republicans, you know what I mean? Like, they hold more of the homophobia than anyone else does. What anti-gay laws are you talking about? Look, my main issue is this notion that we don't really have our rights, we don't truly have our rights, until everyone looks at us a particular way. Nobody has the right to dictate how other people think of them. Nobody. And as long as these activist rights groups are, are pushing this stuff, there's going to be some major pushback. 